energy. So a joule is the amount of energy needed to move one kilogram mass a distance of one meter. We just went over that. Um, a calorie, on the other hand, is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water. Okay, so one joule is a relatively small amount of energy. For example, a 100 watt light bulb uses 3.6 times 10 to the fifth um, joules in one hour. So like we said on here, it uses um, 3.6 times 10 to the fifth joules in one hour. Therefore, we often use the kilojoule in our energy discussions and calculations. It's a lot easier to use kilojoule. Well, um, how do we know how many joules are in a kilojoule? Well, think of your prefixes. What does kilo mean? There's a thousand joules in one kilojoule. Okay, and then one kilojoule equals a thousand joules. The current definition is one calorie. So we talked about calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature. And temperature is what our key word is, right? We're talking about thermodynamics of one gram of water, one degree Celsius. So one calorie is 4.184 joules. Okay, so one calorie is 4.184 joules. The related energy unit is the nutritional, nutritional or uppercase calorie. So when you think of food calories, you think of the uppercase calories, which is actually kilocalories. Okay, so when you're looking at, um, say you're eating a, I don't know, protein bar, and it says that it has 125 calories, that actually means it has 125 kilocalories. Okay, so one calorie, if one calorie is four, if one calorie is 4.184 4 joules, then one calorie, uppercase C, or one kilocalorie is 1,000 calories, which is 4,184 joules, okay? And then kilowatt hour is actually how we measure our, um, say that's how we measure our uh, light bulbs, is 3.6 time, times 10 to the 6 joules, Okay, all conversion uh, factors on this table are exact, so this is a very exact um, conversion. Okay, um, electricity bills typically are based on one another, even larger energy unit called a kilowatt hour. So this is uh, talking about this. Um, one kilowatt hour equals three point six times ten to the six joules. Electricity costs eight cents to fifteen cents per kilowatt. Um, so if you think about it, it says uh, 3.6 times 10 to the 6 joules, and a kill electricity costs point or 8 cents to 15 cents per kilowatt. So um, electricity can build very quickly. That's why your mom always tells you to turn off the lights when you leave the house. Okay. So here's a lot of a uh, various units of energy. So there's the joule. The calorie, the calorie with a capital C, or the kilocalorie in the kilowatt hour. So the amount uh, required to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree Celsius. So we have 4.8 joules, one calorie, 0 0.001 uh, kilocalorie, and 1.6 times 10 to the negative 6 kilowatt hour. Okay, and so on. So there's a lot of different um, conversions. And here it says the amount of used by average US citizen in one day. We usually use 2.5 usually use 2.5 times 10 to the second kilowatt hours a day. Okay. Um, the amount used by a human body in running one mile. So you burn a lot of joules one running one mile, but you burn a lot more using uh, light bulbs. So um, all right, the first law of thermodynamics. Let's talk about the first law of thermodynamics. Um, the first law has many implications. The most important one is that with energy, you cannot get something for nothing. So thermodynamics, like we said, is a study of energy and its um, interconversions. The first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy. This means that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant. Okay, you cannot add energy just out of nowhere. Therefore, you can never design a system that will continue to produce energy with some source of energy, okay? So, the best you can do with energy is break even. 
There's no free lunch. That's basically what they said. There's no such thing as free lunch. Um, this is just kind of a way to describe that, you know, um, somebody's paying for your lunch somewhere, even though if yours is free, this is the same thing about energy. Energy is coming from somewhere, even though it seems it kind of came out of nowhere. According to the first law, a device that would continually produce energy with no energy input, sometimes known as the perpetual motion machine, cannot exist. So there, um, a ton of physicists try to um, make a perpetual motion machine. One of them being, I think Max Planck tried to make a perpetual motion machine, and there's a lot of theories that he did and may have hit it, or etc. Occasionally, the media report or speculate on the discovery of a machine that can produce energy without the need for energy input. For example, you may have heard someone propose an electric car that recharges itself while driving or a new motor that can create additional usable electricity as well as the electricity to power itself. Although some hybrid electric and gasoline powered vehicles can produce energy from braking and use that energy to recharge their batteries, they could never run indefinitely without an additional fuel. As for the motor that powers an external load as well as itself, no such thing exists. Our society has had a continual need for energy, and as our current energy resources dwindle, new energy sources will be required. But those sources, whatever they may be, must follow the first law of thermodynamics. Energy is always conserved. So um, even though it may seem like we're running out of energy, we're just running out of one type of energy. Um, say we're running out of fossil fuels, well, we can just um, try and find something else to convert into energy for our cars. And this is because of the first law of thermodynamics, you cannot get something from nothing. So energy flow and the conservation of energy. Conservation of energy requires that the sum of the energy changes in the system and the surroundings must be zero. Okay, so whatever you put in is the exact amount that you get out. So the energy of the universe equals zero, which is the energy. Okay, so the energy of the universe equals zero which is the energy of the system plus the energy of the surroundings. Okay, remember system is what actually is happening, say the reaction, and then the surroundings is what is, um, as everything else influences it. Okay, this, this symbol right here, you're gonna see this a lot in thermodynamics. It's delta, it's symbol to mean change, so change. Change in energy of the universe. The energy is changing from one form to another equals um, the change in energy of the system plus the change in energy of the surroundings. So that means the um, final amount minus the initial amount. Okay, so what you finished off with minus the amount uh, that you started off with. So the amount of energy we started off with in the system was larger than the surroundings. Well, notice basically they kind of traded places. The surroundings got um, the energy from uh, the system and then the system therefore decreased but they um, gained remember the surroundings gained the exact amount of energy lost by the system okay so let's talk about a state uh, function actually where did my internal there we go internal energy okay so internal energy is the sum of the kinetic and potential energies of all the particles that compose the system okay so internal energy is the sum, sum of the kinetic and potential energies of all the particles that compose the system. And now remember the system is what is reacting. This is not talking about the surroundings. So um, remember the system is what is reacting. Um, hence, internal energy. Internal means inside, so inside the reaction. The change in the internal energy of a system, and change, remember, is that delta sign, depends on only, and then energy is going to be in E, and then system, you'll see system, depends only on the amount of energy in the system at the beginning and the end. This is called a state function. It is a mathematical function whose results depends only on the initial and the final conditions, not the process used, okay? So it does not depend on how it got there. It just depends on the energy that was at the, begin uh, the end and the energy that was in the beginning. It doesn't matter how it got there, 
Okay, so the energy of a reaction equals the energy of the products minus the energy of the reactants. Okay, so um, let's talk about a state function. So a state function uh, is, uh, let's use a, a good uh, illustration is a mountain. So to reach the top of the mountain, there are two trails. There's a long widening and a short but steep. Regardless of the trail, you will reach the top, you will be 10,000 feet above the base. The distance from the base to the peak of the mountain is a state function. It depends only on the difference in elevation between the base and the peak and not how you arrive there. So um, the state of a chemical system is specified by parameters such as temperature, pressure, concentration, and physical state, say in solid, liquid, or gas. Consider the mountain climbing analogy. The elevation at any point during a mountain climb is analogous to its state function. For example, we reach 10,000 feet, our elevation is 10,000 feet, no matter how we got there. The distance we travel to get there, in, by contrast, is not a state function, okay? So the 10,000 feet here, so the 10,000 feet is a state function. We reach 10,000 feet, it doesn't matter how we got there. But the distance we traveled to get there is not a state function, okay? So, um, we could have climbed the mountain by any number of routes requiring to cover different distances. Since state functions depend only on the state of the system, the value of change in a state function is always the difference, difference meaning subtracting, between the final and initial values. So if you saw on the last slide, if you notice, it was the final and the initial values being subtracted. We start climbing a mountain at an elevation of 3,000 feet and reach the summit at 10,000 feet, then our elevation change is 7,000 feet. 10,000 minus 3,000 is 7,000. That's what we um, climbed, regardless of the path we traveled. Like an altitude change, an internal energy change, so the energy of a system, is determined by the difference of an internal energy between the final and initial states. So um, that would it, a um, a uh, formula to kind of uh, illustrate this is the change in the diff change in energy equals the um, final energy minus the initial energy. Okay. And so um, the difference in the final and the initial. In a chemical system, the reactants constitute the initial state and the products constitute the final state. So in a reaction, the final is the products, what was produced, right? And the initial is the reactants. Okay? So um, the change in energy is the products minus the reactants. The amount of energy produced... Um, minus the amount of energy we started off with.